linear sum of the given inputs and this is activation function uh, for each and every uh, new, uh, hidden units and here also the second hidden layer here the the first one is linear sum of the given inputs and parameters and this one is the activation function so hidden layers can be created and activation functions are used in each and every hidden layer the choice of the activation functions could be based upon the problem uh, statement so if it is uh, 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 what do you call uh, um, binary class classification or uh, multi class classification? So, here uh, you have to use the activation functions based upon the given problem statement. Design the architecture of the neural network uh, by deciding the number of layers. So, here we can the, uh, decide the number of hidden layers H1, H2, etc., Hn. The connectivity of the layers and the number of units in each layer also has to be uh, de uh, defined. So, each hidden layer may have uh, 100 neurons or 10 neurons or uh, 1000 neurons so the each hidden layer may ca can have uh, any number of new neurons um, based upon our uh, problem statement but when you are increasing the number of neurons there is the possibility of increasing the complexity in the network so in uh, learning the complex patterns by using neural network it is needed uh, gradients for uh, computing the cost, uh, I mean reducing the cost for complicated uh, functions. So, here to ca calculate the gradients uh, and uh, to reduce the cost, we need back propagation algorithm uh, in the neural network. So, for uh, calculating the gradient, first of all, we should select the right cost function uh, in the gradient based learning. So, here we will uh, use uh, additionally what output should be obtained uh, also is important. So, here the total cost function is used to train the neural network so cost function uh, we are calculating for all the samples in the neural network then uh, here uh, the most of the modern neural networks are trained using a maximum likelihood that is the cost function is simply the negative log likelihood uh, by using the cross entropy method the cross entropy is the loss function which is useful for classification problem statement the grad gradient of the cost function must be large then only it is able to predict enough for learning algorithm functions that saturate become very flat uh, that means you look at that in this position the in the diagram this this portion is very flat right in the uh, search space of gradient okay so here we are searching the suitable parameters uh, to to, uh, to reduce the cost for the given neural network for the uh, given input data set so here in this space in this space our gradient is very flat so this saturation is undermining the objective function because uh, they make the gradient become very small so in this position the gradient value will be very 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 small 0 0.0005 5 like that so it will be very small so the parameter updation will be uh, very 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 small so it leads to make more time to reach the convergence point and activation functions are used to produce the output of the hidden units or the output units which also may be saturated so we are going to use the negative log, log likelihood to avoid this kind of issues in many different kind of neural network models so the maximum likelihood is estimated by uh, using the objective function to find the theta value that means parameter values theta or w parameter values that is maximizing the log likely maximizing the likelihood value for given training data set here the y cap is uh, assumed as a predicted probability of positive classes and the sigmoid function is used as a nonlinear activation function that is mapping the output uh, from minus infinity to infinity right any value you are getting output between 
between the minus infinity to infinity compress into the 0 to 1. So, the sigmoid activation function is always having the value like this. So, whatever uh, output you are getting that will be bring into the 0 or 1 here default threshold value will be 0 0.5. So, whatever value suppose my output is 10 that will be bringing into the, the value 0. Okay. So, the activation function here output y dash equal to 1 whenever the calculated value is greater than, greater than or equal to 1 right and uh, less than or equal to 1 means then we will bring into 0 so like the sorry not 1 0 0.5 Okay, so 0 0.5 is the threshold value here. So, whichever value greater than or equal to 0 0.5 that will bring into the 1, whichever value less than 0 0.5 that will bring into the 0. So, the sigmoid function is used as your activation function to predict the value for classification problem statement in the neural network uh, and the log likelihood for this problem statement is probability of data with respect to the parameters theta or w equal to product of i equal to 1 to n number of samples here the predicted value of ith sample power actual value of the ith sample multiplied 1 minus predicted value of ith sample power 1 minus uh, actual value of ith sample so here we are going to apply the logarithmic to this uh, likelihood function so which is used to verify the predicted probabilities which are assigned to the true labels correct labels so probability of uh, uh, data with respect to theta so here we are going to apply the logarithmic here then i equal to 1 to m number of samples we are uh, summing the error value for each and every uh, sample ith sample so y i log y i cap so this is predicted output 1 minus y a actual value into log 1 minus predicted value so here log is uh, natural log we are using and for each sample i uh, model is adding either log of predicted value or log of 1 minus predicted value so this portion or this portion so here for positive class uh, we are using the predicted value for the ith data point and 1 minus yi, yi dash is using for uh, find, finding the negative class that means this portion is used to find the negative class this first term is used to finding the positive class here a simple example is given to uh, compute the log likelihood start with the predicted uh, probability values that is the y cap or sometimes we, we will use y dash if we are given raw prediction values we can apply the sigmoid function uh, to calculate the probability that means suppose if we are getting the x comma parameter value as a uh, input for the problem statement then we have to apply the sigmoid of uh, uh, the, this the function right to get the probability values then after that we can find out the negative class by using the second term 1 minus y, uh, y cap log of 1 minus y cap right uh, positive class will be identified by using the y cap so log of y cap so here we are applying the log value values to this negative class and positive class finally we are summing up the log probability values so here a simple example the actual output is given for this five samples one two three four five and here we are finding the uh, this is uh, predicted values okay predicted values are given and actual values are given here actual output values are y predicted values are given as a y cap then as per this formula what is the formula here last function is binary cross last class entropy is uh, this one y log y dash r plus y 1 minus y into log 1 1 minus y cap so here we are finding the values for each and every term for all five samples then finally uh, here the y, y cap is predicted probability so we are going to find out uh, based upon the substituting the va substituting the values so y into log y so first sample we are taking so y is 0 0.64 and log y cap is here we are having minus 0 0.45 so both we have to uh, multiply so you are getting the minus 1.01 .01, okay and uh, 1 minus y y uh, 1 minus y is here we have to use the first sample okay the first sample 
example, 1 minus uh, y is here 1, so it will become 0. So, entire term will become 0. So, this value y into log y dash y cap, so that is giving you the value. Like that, we have to calculate for the second sample. So, second sample is here, actual output is 0, y is 0, then y into log y cap. So, log y cap is here minus 0 uh, uh, for the second sample, okay, minus 1.31, 0 into minus 1.31 into plus 1 minus minus 0 okay 1 minus 0 is the uh, actual output we are substituting then log of 1 minus y cap so log of 1 minus cap uh, second sample is minus 0 0.31 so 1 into minus 0 0.31 is here we are getting value uh, this one okay and uh, like that we have to calculate again for the third sample so for third sample again we have to substitute so when you are substituting these values you will get so these are the predicted values so then finally we are summing up all the predicted probability values here uh, this one uh, so uh, minus 0 0.5 minus 0.31 minus 0.04 minus 1.68 and minus 1.1 so finally we are getting the cost values minus 3.58 as a value for this function so here these two terms uh, these two columns are indicating uh, this values log 1 minus y cap this this values and log of uh, y cap so from this we are calculating this loss function you see finally we are getting the error is minus 3.58 Actually, error should not come in the negative value. We should get in the positive value. So, what we have to do to uh, make this into positive value, we are going to use negative log likelihood. Okay. So, uh, the negative like log likelihood is going to be applied to minimize the loss uh, for the uh, given problem statement. So, here we are going to use negative log likelihood. So, minus of uh, then this term okay so negative log likelihood is going to be applied to make that uh, cost function into uh, uh, i mean uh, that uh, negative value into positive value then you will get a uh, positive value in the uh, cost function so finally uh, the correct entries in a matrix is sometimes called as masking so the mask is constructed based upon the labels which are called uh, true labels in the given uh, problem statement thanks for watching